what's your favorite scary movie? Hi. <laughs> so, uh, as you see, I uh, finally did see Scream 6, and I did not intend on actually watching the first five, but I, or today, I'm going to go ahead and rank all six Scream movies. So, uh, I did see this Thursday night of last week, and uh, this was part of like an AMC giveaway. I just thought I'd like to show that off. But uh, this is a really, really cool poster. <laughs> and happy Sunday, and welcome back to another video. That intro needs work. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like I said, today I'm going to rank all six Scream movies from worst to best. And I'm using worst in not the baddest way possible because all these movies are solid. So let's go ahead and start off with Number six, Scream 3. Now, a lot of people would agree with this to be like the weakest of the franchise. And it's one that uh, is kind of like lifeless and kind of dull at some times. But it's still a very fun movie. And... Uh, you get the departure from Woodsboro to actually Los Angeles. And there's a new cast of characters that are uh, part of the cast of Stab 3. And then Ghostface strikes again and kills them one by one. This does have a very prominent opening kill with Cotton Weary and his girlfriend. And you also hear... What If on the radio by Creed. Yeah, that's definitely a time capsule. <laughs> but uh, this, of course, reunites Gail, Sydney, and Dewey. And they're there to help out this new cast before they die. And ultimately see who the killer is. Which in this one is one of the weakest... Ghostface Identities. This is actually Sydney's half-brother. And, uh... The brother was actually, uh... Fathered by Billy Loomis's dad. And her mom cheated on her dad with him. So that's how he's the brother. Still verily... Still a very solid movie, but you have like the likes of uh, Jenny McCarthy, Dion Richmond, Patrick Dempsey, and Parker Posey, and Patrick Warburton is in here as well. So I really do enjoy this movie, but it is by far the weakest of the franchise. Moving on to number five, and this actually went down for me, Scream 4. For years, this was my second favorite Scream movie. But it didn't age that well. So, uh, this was released in 2011, and it was like the new legacy of Scream before they came out with this requel thing, but uh, you have like a very good cast of characters, including a standout, Kirby, played by Hayden Panettiere, one of my all-time favorite characters in this franchise. I mean, she's like the horror nut, and uh, she's pretty much a replacement for Randy. So, this picks up like with Sydney on like a book tour, and she's called back to Woodsboro to see who the killer or killers are. 
So she tries to protect her cousin, played by Emma Roberts, and uh, she's actually the killer with Rory Culkin as Charlie. And I do believe that she is one of the craziest ghost faces ever. But this movie is shot very weirdly. It's oddly bright. And uh, some of the characters you absolutely forget about, especially Adam Brody and Anthony Anderson. They're just like throwaway cop characters. And they're like pretty much done with 30 seconds. <laughs> and I got to mention Anthony Anderson's stab to the head is brutal. So that is a standout kill in this one. But Emma Roberts is psychotic in this one. And she is one of my favorite Ghostface killers. And not to mention there are three different openings to this film. That uh, include like Stab 6 and Stab 7. And then you get the actual opening. But uh... It's like a movie within a movie within a movie. It's a very creative choice for the opening scene. And I really do like that to some degree. But it is kind of cheesy. But, uh, yeah. That was Scream 4. And at number 4, Scream 2. One of the best horror sequels of all time, in my opinion. And uh, this reunites everybody, like Sidney, Dewey, and Gale. And it also has Randy in here. And now they're in college. So, this picks up right where the first one left off. Just like a year after the events. And uh, this has one of the most controversial kills of all time, and that is the death of Randy. So, if you don't know, Randy gets axed off like halfway through this movie, and it devastates Scream fans. I mean, huh. He was... One of the best characters in this whole franchise. And to see him go was just heartbreaking, man. <laughs> but, uh, probably one of the most tense third acts of this movie. They're like in the theater college, college theater. And the killers are Mickey, which is a film student played by Timothy Oliphant. And Billy Loomis's mother. So I definitely saw that coming a mile away with Timothy Oliphant, but I did not see Billy Loomis's mom being the other killer. So it's a very, very good final act. And this is one of my favorite opening scenes to all of the Scream movies. Because it takes place in like a movie theater. And uh, it's the opening night for Stab. You have Omar Epps and Jada Pinkett Smith in here. And they're the first two axed off. So a really great sequel. But it definitely hasn't aged that well. But it still is very, very enjoyable. That was Scream 2. And at number 3 is going to be Scream 2022. And uh, this is definitely the reinvention of the franchise and a new generation. Because all these legacy characters have very minor parts. Instead, this movie focuses on 
two sisters and their group of friends and uh, Melissa Barrera is Sam and Jenna Ortega is Tara. So now they are the two final girls of this new legacy and uh, not to mention major, major death in here is by Dewey. So that was hard to see him go, but five movies in and none of the legacy characters died. It's getting a little far fetched at this point. <laughs> I mean, I was pretty shocked when that happened, but after rewatching it, you know, it's coming, but I still find this movie to be very enjoyable. But the Ghostface identities in here might be the weakest, like above Scream 3. You just get uh, Sam's love interest, Richie, and uh, this girl, Amber. And they just want to uh, make everything bigger and bloodier. So this is like one of the first instances instances where Ghostface is not clumsy. He doesn't trip over anything. He's just very mean. And this is the movie that started off this meaner Ghostface. Some of the deaths in here are really gnarly. I mean, they're pretty much stab but especially with Dylan Minnette he like gets it right in the neck and he just pushes it further and further that was pretty rough but uh really do enjoy this after 14 months and not to mention the third act is in the same house as the original and I do not believe that that was forced. It's actually a really good third act. But I automatically saw who the killer and killers were. I mean, I definitely predicted Richie, but I did not see Amber being the other killer. But that's the magic of this franchise. And... You guess who the killer is in like 10 minutes. But it still is a really enjoyable movie. So that was Scream 2022. And at number two, and I really had to ponder on this. I'm actually going to put Scream. So uh, this is the new entry, of course. And uh, this is basically Ghostface Takes Manhattan. Done very well, by the way, compared to Friday the 13th Part 8, where Jason took a boat to Manhattan. But the setting of New York is done to perfection in here, in my opinion. So this picks up a year after the events of Scream 2022, and uh, you only have one returning character, well, one legacy character, and that's uh, Gail. But uh, I'm glad they didn't use her that much in here. So, uh, yeah, she's more of a minor part in here, but you also do get the return of Kirby Reed, which I was very over the moon for. She is now an FBI agent and she's tracking ghost face killers. And uh, this movie is big in its scale because you have no idea who ghost face could be, especially when it's in a major city like New York. But that's when the movie kind of went down for me. 
the ghost face identity was very contrived and very forced. But, uh, let's just say it's, uh, the family of the last major ghost face killer and scream 2022. So Deborah Mulroney, which is, uh, a detective that helps everybody out. He's actually the mastermind, and it's his son and daughter who are the killers. So, that felt kind of forced, and again, you can like definitely uh, predict the killers. And I was definitely right for one of them. I did not see the other one happen at all. Because the sister gets butchered and she faked her death. So another logical issue I have with this. There are like many characters who are in mortal danger and somehow they survive. Especially the twins, which would be Randy Meek's niece and nephew. The nephew gets stabbed like freaking 10 times and he just comes out of nowhere and he survived this one. It makes no sense. But it's just keeping this uh, new legacy going. And not to mention, and this is a big, big negative for me, Gail actually survives. Because she's stabbed in the stomach with a shard of glass. She almost literally died. And then, like, help came for her at once. And now she's in the hospital recovering. So there's going to be a lot of debate on what's going to happen in Scream 7. So, of course, Sydney is not in the picture as of this movie, but things can totally turn around and scream seven. And this is like a conspiracy theory for a lot of people. And it would kind of like end the franchise as a whole. I'm just going to say it right here. I'm kind of predicting that Sydney and Gail are going to be the killers for the next one. Because it just seems very convenient that they both survive. And Sydney was nowhere in the picture. So she might be planning something. That would either hurt this franchise or take it to the next step. But who knows at this point. And that was my thoughts on Scream 6, which was number two, which leaves me at number one. And was this any surprise? The original Scream. This movie was one of the first horror movies that got me into horror. Released in 1996 and directed by Wes Craven. This is one of the best slashers of the last 30 years. So, this has the most iconic opening scene of all time. With the death of Drew Barrymore right there. And it's like a mini movie in itself. And it just starts off as a flirtatious phone call with Drew Barrymore and the killer, and the killer wants to play movie trivia with her. One of the tensest opening moments in horror history, which leads into one of the best horror movies of all time, especially for 90s kids. <laughs> but uh, this picks up with Sydney. Sydney Prescott, which is like 
a high schooler and she's with her circle of friends. She's got Billy, Stu, Randy, and Tatum. So it's a really solid cast. But you got Billy Loomis played by Skeet Ulrich. Whoa. Stu Mocker played by Matthew Lillard. You got Randy Meeks played by Jamie Kennedy. And Tatum. Tatum Riley. <laughs> Played by Rose McGowan. So, yeah. This is definitely the start of a Scooby-Doo Who Done It. And after so many times of watching this, even on your first watch, you could predict who the killer is. But the major twist is that there are, are two killers. Billy and Stu. So, that final Ghostface identity reveal is one of the most iconic parts of this movie. You don't see it coming, but when you do, you're shocked. <laughs> but in my opinion, this is like a perfect horror movie. I don't find anything wrong with it at all. And that's my number one pick for the Scream movies. So, I was just planning on doing a solo review for Scream 6, but I watched all five of these movies last week, so I decided to just rank them all. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, look out for my Shazam double feature review. I'll have that out as soon as like next Friday and uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. I'll see you guys in the next, I'll see you guys in the next video. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. There we go. All right, guys, I'll see you next Friday. Adios. Peace.